NBA rules you didn't know exist. Are you a diehard NBA fan? Do you think you know all the NBA rules? Think again. In this video, we'll uncover some of the most weird NBA rules you didn't even know existed. From the lesser known violations that could cost your team a crucial point, to the strange circumstances that could result in a player being ejected from the game. We'll take you on a deep dive into the weird and wonderful world of NBA rules. So join us as we dive into the world of NBA rules you didn't know existed. Get ready to be amazed as we uncover some of the most obscure and surprising rules of the NBA. Rule number one. During a basketball game, a particular dunk was so dangerous that the National Basketball Association (NBA) had to ban it. The dunk was so powerful that it caused damage to the basketball hoop, putting everyone on the court at risk. The dunk was performed by a famous player named Shaq, known for his incredible strength and power. Shaq's dunks were so forceful that he could destroy the entire basketball hoop. Due to the dangerous nature of this dunk, the NBA created a new rule called the No Shatter Rule in 1993. The rule states that if a player dunks the ball so hard that it shatters the backboard, the points will not be counted, and the player will receive a technical foul. Shaq's incredible athleticism and powerful dunks had a significant impact on the NBA, leading to the creation of this new rule. He's he, he good in New Orleans. Word about Chico. I'm, oh, man. I, I'm, no, and, and, you know, I'm, 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 I'm joking and I'm serious. What do you look like? <laughs> like, ooh, say, we had a baby. No, two, three weeks, but Chuck, you, you had a visceral reaction to this. Like rule number two. In the NBA, there's a rule that can cause players to be forced to pay millions of dollars if they weigh too much. This rule was brought to attention in 2022 when Zion Williamson, who reached over 300 pounds, had become the heaviest player in the NBA. When Williamson was renegotiating his contract with the Pelicans, they agreed to pay him, but added a weight clause to his contract. This clause stated that Williamson must legally stay under 295 pounds, and if he failed, he would have to pay millions of dollars. It's interesting to note that the NBA has rules for almost everything, including weight restrictions for players. Course of NBA history. It happened not on the court, but in a snowy cornfield in Carroll, Iowa. Jim Huber takes a look back 50 years later at the frightening flight of the Minneapolis Lakers. Imagine a world without magic and Kobe Bryant in purple and gold. Somehow picture life without showtime. Rule number three. On January 17, 1960, the Minneapolis Lakers were returning home from a basketball game in St. Louis when their plane suddenly went into free fall. The pilot had no choice but to make a crash landing. Miraculously, everyone survived. However, this near-death experience led to a serious question for the NBA. What would happen if an entire team died at once? The NBA has a rule called the Disaster Draft, which allows teams to select players from other teams to fill their roster if more than five players die. This rule ensures that the team can continue to play and compete in the league. It highlights the importance of preparing for any situation and planning accordingly to ensure the league can function smoothly, even in the most unlikely circumstances. Again, uh, De'Aaron Fox and that broken left index finger 17 points in the first half. Yeah, everybody was uh, concerned about how he was going to play. And I'm going to tell you how he's playing. Six for 13, 17 points. Listen, playing with confidence. He said he was going to be mentally ready. Shoots the ball with confidence right there. Rule number four. In the National Basketball Association, NBA, there's a regulation that prohibits farting during team activities. This rule was enforced in the late 2000s, mainly due to the actions of a player named Dwight Howard. Howard was known to be one of the dirtiest players in the league, as he frequently farted during games, practices, and other team-related events. His excessive farting led him to being called the greatest farter in the NBA, and it started to bother his teammates. The Orlando Magic, the team that Howard played for them, eventually implemented a policy against farting during team activities in 2009. 
This policy was implemented because Howard's teammates were becoming increasingly frustrated with his constant farting. The policy states that it is now against the rules to fart during any team-related activity. <laughs> Your mom so dumb, she snuck on the bus and paid to get off. Jack, why? Because his mother gives great singing lessons. <laughs> Here come I'm just Express. playing. Be quick. I'm, I'm breaking out hey. the mama again. Hey. Be quick. Who needs the ball? Rule number five. In the NBA, it is strictly forbidden to make Yo Mama jokes, as per the league's rules. The story behind this rule involves Don Nobler, a self-proclaimed Maverick superfan and Yo Mama joke enthusiast. In 2018, he was courtside at Thomason, watching the Mavericks play the Clippers when he began talking trash to Patrick Beverly, a player for the Clippers. However, Patrick Beverly was not interested in engaging with Don and fired back with a retort. That's when Don went for the kill and roasted Pat Beverly with just three words, yo mama, causing chaos. This incident was not well received and the NBA had to take action. Don was banned from the arena for a year and the league introduced a new rule the next season, making yo mama jokes illegal. The rule states that any comments about a player's mother would result in the offending fan being removed from their seat. Despite this, Don remains unapologetic and insists that no one can pull him out of his love for Yo Mama jokes. The disbelief that you occasionally see from Duncan, but Popovich doesn't agree. So Duncan picks up his first and will take a break. He doesn't want to hear it. Rule number six. We need to discuss referees because laughing at them is actually against the rules. In 2007, Tim Duncan was sitting on the bench and not causing any trouble when a free throw was missed, and a technical foul was called on him for apparently laughing at the ref. Shortly after this incident, Duncan was ejected from the game for emitting a low giggle, which was deemed disrespectful by the referee, Roberto. This led to another technical foul and an automatic ejection from the game. It seemed that Crawford, the referee, felt that Duncan was showing him up by laughing and therefore took it as a personal offense. This incident demonstrates that referees can be quite sensitive and that even looking at them the wrong way could result in a penalty. He has said that he will alternate numbers throughout the season wearing the four numbers he has worn in the NBA. We shall see. Rule number seven. Another rule implemented. Steve informed the group that someone else did not speak technically, and Wallace was removed from the group for committing a foul. The decision was made because the individual had been asked to stop thrice. The person who committed the foul and Dennis Rodman were in a situation together where Rodman had forced the NBA to ban his jersey number in 2000. Rodman had signed with the Mavericks during a meeting with team owner Mark Cuban, where he requested to have 69 as his jersey number. Mark Cuban agreed, and the next day, he ordered 10,000 Rodman jerseys with the number 69 on them. However, the NBA found out and wanted to be more pleased with Rodman's number choice. The league held a vote, and by the end, they decided to ban number 69. This left Rodman with no choice but to wear number 70. Straws, like, uh -huh. stuff like that. I used to have a pile of straws. Uh -huh. You know, uh, Got a handful on me right now. <laughs> Keep straws. It's not that weird. I mean, you get used to it, and you know, it's an everyday routine, everyday thing. So. You don't worry about him like choking on a straw or something. If you ain't choked by now, you ain't gonna choke, I guess. Okay. Did you want to try one? I got a bunch of them. If you want to try two. Rule number eight. The subject of the passage is Karan Butler, a former NBA player known for his unusual habit of chewing on straws during games. Butler was so obsessed with chewing straws that he even created a record in NBA history for the most straws chewed during a match. According to the passage, Karan Butler had a fascination for chewing on straws as it helped him calm his nerves. He used to chew on straws from various fast food chains such as Burger King, McDonald's, and 7-Eleven. Butler's obsession was so severe that he could chew through 12 straws during a single game. However, the NBA officials were concerned that Butler's habit might cause him to choke during a game, and thus, they decided to ban players from chewing straws during NBA games in 2010. Giddy wisely passes away from DeAndre Jordan. Basley, that is a tough shot, and much like he did in the first half. And Davis goes right over the top using his length again. Rule 9. During a basketball game between the Thunder and the Lakers in 2021, the Thunder were already winning by five points with just four seconds left. 
However, Darius did something unethical, causing him to lose possession of the ball, and Baisley dunked the ball, sealing the win for the Thunder. This angered Ross, one of the players on the Lakers team, as Darius had broken an unwritten rule that players follow, that you should not score anymore if your team is already winning and there's only a matter of time left. Russ had to confront Darius and remind him of this rule, emphasizing the importance of enforcing rules and regulations in the NBA to maintain fairness and sportsmanship during games. Rule number 10. In the late 2000s, when Twitter was first launched, NBA players were immediately addicted to tweeting. Some players were tweeting during their games, while others were tweeting some crazy stuff, such as Shaq announcing when he farts and Katie threatening people. As a result, the NBA created a Twitter rule in 2009 that bans players from tweeting during workouts and allows the league to fine them thousands of dollars for offensive tweets. This rule exists because the NBA wants players to be careful with their tweets. However, players should be cautious about other players cheating. Therefore, a strict rule bans NBA players from using Twitter during workouts and allows the league to impose hefty fines for offensive tweets. Thanks for watching this video. We hope you learned something new and exciting about the game of basketball. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more informative content. Until next time, keep enjoying the game. And remember, there's always more to learn.